so i welcome you all and everyone i mean i think you are aware of ravi ravi is a cfa and frm and he has more than 15 years of experience in market so we were uh, discussing yesterday that tomorrow will be uh, tomorrow lic will be listed so it won't i mean it is a good time to discuss about it because people those who have applied and those who feel left out have so many questions related to lic right so it would be good if we discuss the very important i mean it's a big ipo so ravinder what's your take on tomorrow's listing of lic yeah i think uh, like we have to see how the uh, listing trend has been in the recent part uh, past and particularly about the lic uh, if i remember correctly the lic when the ipo opened uh the gray market premium used to be quoting at 30 50 rupees and even higher and as the market has corrected in last two weeks uh, i think the gray market premium has also come down so uh, it's uh, recently i checked that it was about minus 30 rupees so i don't see uh, that there would be any great fireworks uh, on this thing day uh, apart from that even when as we discussed in the one of the previous spaces as well uh the kind of investors uh, we were expecting uh from overseas the fii they didn't participated with that great enthusiasm so uh, there was only one or uh, there was only two big names which came out uh in that sense i can say that the response looks like uh, it will it might open at a discount but there uh, anything can happen yeah, on a listing day uh, though it's a very large ipo what it can move anywhere but expectations are it might open at a discount and other reason is like uh, uh, the pricing we came to know about the beginning of the this month may and since then the index itself has corrected 7 8% at least so that might also reflect on uh, lic prices that whatever gray market premium it was quoting at earlier it seems like that is a discount right now so yeah, that is i won't have very big expectation from listing of lic at least on the listing day i don't have very big expectation all right so that would be a like um, a short term view on i mean seeing the broader market right but uh, going forward how you see lic i mean in the there are many listed private players already and new entrant that to a big ipo so how you see insurance sector as a whole going forward look we can talk about insurance sector as a whole and lic as a different animal uh, one thing uh, it, this theme is very well accepted by every player in the market that insurance will continue to grow at a very fast clip for next 10 20 years say we all say that our penetration of insurance in india is very low uh, somewhere if i remember uh, the number it's like less than 3% of gdp is the insurance uh, sector and if you compare the developed market it would be in double digit even if you compare few of the asian peers it will be 5 6% that kind of range uh, when we compare what kind of insurance premium indians pay as a per capita that's also very low it's like it's one third of few of the asian peers so it is widely accepted view that uh, insurance sector is expected to grow at much faster pace how we view i view insurance sector as a growth is say uh, we i always constructed on a macro economic picture say india's gdp is expected to grow in a real terms 6% there would be 4 5% kind of inflation so you expect the gdp will be growing at that 11 12% and then uh, since the insurance penetration itself has been fairly low compared to developed nation uh, insurance uh, growth would be around 15 16% so that we at least achieve some kind of uh, higher penetration than what it uh, what is currently is so on a on a insurance sector you have to be very very bullish at least on the growth side there is no denying fact that the penetration in india is very low and it will continue to grow for at least one or two decades Uh, on the other side for the lic the problem is they are losing market share to the like like this story is what uh, the private banks versus psu banks were 20 years back so insurance sector also stand at the same jurisdiction say from there private sector bank continue to gain market share in india and that was taken away from the psu banks similarly what is happening is uh, uh, private insurance players which are very well uh, uh, 
branded and very well present through their banking partners, uh, their parents. And uh, so their penetration will expect we expect that they will again continue to gain market share, and the costs would be on uh, PSU insurers. So on the life insurance side, say LIC has a massive, massive market share. Uh, all other player, HDFC, ICICI, they have some uh, high, low, single-digit market share in India, while LIC is about two-third of India's market. So uh, it seems like since private players are very aggressive. They will continue to gain market share from LIC. So, won't say the problem with uh, uh, LIC. It's so huge in terms of its current uh, uh, size that growing at a faster pace for this company itself will become a very challenging task. Say, just to give you a, a view on how big this size is. Say, India's entire mutual fund industry is about 37, 38 lakh crore. LIC AUM itself is about 37, 38 lakh crore. So LIC AUM is equivalent to India's mutual fund industry itself. So growing that size of organization, it's actually very, very tough. Other thing which problem LIC will face is, say people when they are investing through LIC, even on the ULIP plans, uh, the expectation is that uh, since this is a very large organization, even on the rural side, the expectation would be it will. Uh, it will beat in terms of market return, but the problem with LIC is it with 38 lakh crore kind of a year, it itself is the beta, so it will decide market return because it's the largest player in India. So uh, LIC outperforming on return itself is difficult, and then LIC being a PSU, it it becomes less agile in terms of competition with the private players. So expectations are they will they will lose market share. Ah, uh, very difficult to say valuation wise because it has been priced very very attractively. It is only 1.1 kind of uh, embedded value, while other players minimum is about two. But uh, as we know that in India, if you are not delivering on growth, uh, and uh, uh, other players in the sector if they are delivering on growth, uh, it's difficult to get a higher premium valuation. Yeah, right. Yeah. So one very important aspect of, we often talk about penetration of insurance in India. So would you say we are less on penetration, or would you say we are under insured? What would be your take on this? It's both. Uh, it's both. Say uh, there are three, four metrics which industry talks about. Uh, one metric, even if you go to LIC RHP, uh, you will find they will talk about what is per capita insurance value in India. They will talk about what is insurance uh, as a percentage of India's GDP. Uh, they will also talk about what is kind of protection gap. Protection gap is say, suppose if I value my future earning from today is about 10 lakh, and if I am insuring myself only for 2 lakh, so there is 80 percent kind of insure uh, this uh, pre uh, protection gap in my life insurance policy. So that is very high in India. If you compare uh, premium as a percentage of GDP, uh, India would be somewhere around uh, less than three percent. Developed nation would be uh, double-digit kind of numbers. So there we also we see that there is a huge potential of growth for insurance companies. Even on per capita side, similarly that uh, if you take the median of the world, it would be about three x. Uh, similarly, if you see what kind of sum assured, uh, say insurance player have as a percentage of GDP. That also uh, India is very very low. While other countries, they would some of the developed nation would be even higher than 100 percent of their GDP as a sum assured. So in case anything happens in those countries, so uh, the individual, the companies are very well protected. While in India, uh, the insurance still like at least uh, now the things are changing. But still, if you if you uh, Talk to middle-aged man uh, on the rural side. Uh, some of them is still consider LIC as a tax-saving instrument, which is which is not purely right. You have to see it as uh, as a pure term insurance on a protection basis. So penetration is definitely it's very very low, and uh, that's the reason I think that expectation is it will continue to grow uh, for at least next two decades. Yeah. 
but like uh, i was seeing some data in comparison to many uh, countries like china germany the penetration percentage was more or less similar on a large population base and apart from that yeah we often see like insurance are taken more like investment in our country as you discussed about ulip plans and all so uh, how you see the product mix which lic is offering in comparison to the private players and uh, i would also like to i mean understand the parallel you d- drew between paytm and lic ipo okay parallel was something else here i was just okay i i understand that thing i was just tweeting about something on lic marketing and paytm marketing i will come to that later on uh what I, what the thing is uh, say uh, a few asian countries few southeast asian countries has a similar kind of profile in terms of premium as a percentage of gdp and you rightly pointed out china is one of them uh the premium percentage is about 3% but uh, uh, going ahead i think even china will also see how the developed world uh, the western world has a higher uh, premium percentage of gdp and they also move towards that direction that is number one point the other point is what i see when i talk to say people in their 20 late 20s and 30s say how our previous generation used to think about uh, saving and investment is you save so that you you have money during tough times if there is any in future how young generation see is that they will have insurance they will have uh, say if anything goes wrong they will have insurance but they are enjoying their life the uh, spending capacity of those individuals the young ones are pretty much high they are not uh, on a saving side the, they are not saving as much as our previous generation did and one reason for that is they, what they are saying is uh, if anything goes wrong i have this health cover i have this life cover and that's why if if things goes wrong i have something to fall back on and uh, and that if if even that culture uh, Uh, get uh, more prevalent in the younger audience then also you will see uh, higher penetration of life insurance in india uh, yeah so uh, for growth wise i i don't see there should be any doubt in terms of uh, insurance companies okay so much like from a long term perspective like how how you see lic going forward what would be your i mean if i were to ask you like if you have to choose between the private players and uh, lic what would be your take and guys uh, whatever we are discussing here as a disclaimer we are not discussing for a buy or sell recommendation these are purely educational opinions you can take it with a pinch of salt it is more of educational uh, interaction with ravindra and the, i mean joinees if you find value with such discussions i would like you to connect with the handles uh, for ravindra and uh, mine also and even ankit and share academy has joined so that uh, more information can reach you and you people get notification when we hold such spaces in future over to you ravi yeah uh, as i was saying yeah uh, the problem i see as a investment basket for lic is uh, there is two three reason here uh, one is they are losing market share which is uh, very well known because uh, say private players which has come into force and now they are holding uh, somewhere around 78% kind of market share uh, each private player i'm saying other thing about investment in lic i think for a long term also no the the one thing which will happen here is every year you will see government will come and offload some shares because right now they will they are offloading only 3 and a half percent so uh, even even sebi mandate is say for ne- uh, after next two years three years you need to bring it down to 75% i am very sure they will give away leeway for lic and they will say that your time is still next five years seven years but then there is huge amount of new uh, shares which will be offloaded every year so there is no dearth of liquidity which will keep on coming in terms of new shares for lic in the market on the other hand uh, growing market share itself is for lic is difficult if you remember in one of our previous conversation also we discussed this that lic made few changes recently uh, what they did is uh, uh, on a non participatory uh, ulip instrument uh, the shareholder g- contribution is going to go significantly down uh, significantly up and uh, the unit holder contribution will be coming down and hence what happened till now is 
LIC has been a push product from uh, agent side. Agent uh, used to push this product to their customers because they they know the customers very well and they use their personal relationship to push this LIC product. Now, when the unit holder, this cashback schemes and all will be curtailed significantly, I think it will be difficult for LIC to compete with private players in few years' time uh, because the main reason for LIC was known for its ULIP scheme where it used to give cashback and on those kind of things. While other uh, life insurance, they are more famous for uh, pure term insurance kind of plan. Uh, other distinction is, uh, say, a uh, few of the private players, the leading one, uh, they, uh, they get higher valuation because they sell more term insurance, like the pure term insurance. You take uh, a 30-year-old guy, take a 1 crore policy, and he's paying some 10, 12,000 as a premium every year. Uh, on the case of casualty, uh, he will get the, uh, the family will get the uh, claim, uh, claim amount. That is pure term. Uh, insurance and the retail kind of uh, term insurance. Say, say, uh, uh, an organization do it for all its employee. This is group level term insurance. Here, the the insurer doesn't have any kind of pricing power. But the player, private players in India, they are now getting very very aggressive on the most lucrative part of life insurance, which is retail and term insurance. That is one instrument which is going to give very high kind of return in the next 10 years, 20 years down the line. And those segments I see uh, private players are very aggressive. Apart from that, like, uh, which other thing you should see is how well embedded is the technology for any insurance company, how good is, uh, how, uh, how well you can onboard any new customer digitally. Uh, those kind of features help to gain market share. And I guess, again, on those parameters as well, uh, the private players will have a stronger hand in future. Uh, so, uh, I, I, though LIC would be extremely cheap valued, uh, because private players say average would be two and a half times. Uh, and, uh, and on a life insurance, we value them on an embedded value basis. So, LIC is being valued at 1.1, while average of the private insurance would be about 2.5. But given this backdrop that uh, the private player will keep on gaining market share and they are more aggressively targeting the most profitable segment, I think it's better to stick with those players. Yeah, makes sense, Ravi. We also have Ankit with us. Ankit, we would also love to have your views on tomorrow's listing and how you see LIC going forward. Hi, hi, and hi, Ravindra, and hi, everyone who has joined in. So, uh, Ravi has actually uh, covered it pretty well. Uh, I don't have too much of a view on this because I have not looked at it in detail. The only thing, and from a, I can't say anything from a listing point or gains point of view, but from a long-term point of view, my sense is that uh, ultimately what we have seen in the banks is also going to happen in case of insurance. It's actually already happening wherein the private players will uh, take away share from the public sector. So that is an irreversible trend in my view. I may be wrong, but this is what I feel. So when that kind of scenario is there, uh, I would be a little hesitant to take a, a long-term view uh, in a stock like LIC. However, uh, from a from a valuation point of view, they have actually uh, kept the valuation very, very reasonable probably keeping in mind the current market sentiment. That's it uh, from my side. Yeah. Thanks, Ankit. Thanks. So, Ravi... I mean, Actually, Ravi... Ankit is right. On a valuation side, na, the, the company has reduced its valuation very, very sig uh, significantly. If you remember, say, last year when the talks of LIC IPO started, uh, we everywhere on the newspaper you used to hear it will be more than 10 lakh crore kind of IPO. Even on budget speeches, when you hear the kind of monetization on a 5% basis, they never talk about anything less than 50,000 crore, which again talks about 10 lakh crore kind of IPO uh, valuation for LIC. They have brought it down very, very significantly to make it attractive. Uh, but again, uh, the problem here is uh, you might see uh, valuation attractive in the short term, but on long term, uh, as we discussed till now, the reason for losing market share 
that is that would be uh, on top of mind of uh, large investors uh, Yeah. So Ravi, I think uh, the margins are lowest for group insurance, right? Margin would be lowest for group insurance, and then uh, like uh, the highest margin is for individual insurance in the term plan for life insurance. So though that segment, I guess right now has been very very aggressively targeted by HBFC Life. Right, right, right. So we have uh, opened up the floor for the audiences. They can send their requests and they can ask their queries uh, from Ravi and Ankit. So Ekansh, you can unmute yourself and ask your question, please. Uh, thank you for uh, uh, this chance. First, first of all, I would like to say that inflation actually increases the premium, which is actually really good for any insurance company. And I think we are in a time of pretty high inflation, so it's going to be good for them. and secondly uh, i think lic is uh, uh, going to be traded at a discount because they are there are really the markets are really selling off and also i would like to know about uh, not lic but the uh, uh, the whole market as a but the whole market like uh, we know that uh, this uh, insurance sector is really less uh, uh, really less uh, uh, the premium is really less so i think going ahead 20 years uh, i think private players are going to take the lead in terms of market capital but lic at this point actually has more than half of the market of itself i think it's about 60% something so i just want to know at what point will the private players overtake lic in terms of market market cap uh, look uh, one thing uh, on a private players taking over lic would be like it will take a really long time say if we talk individually the largest one is i guess hdfc life about that is about 1 lakh 10 1 lakh 15 thousand crore kind of market cap or even lower now and lic is going to list at somewhere around 6 lakh crore even if i combine all the three players uh, hdfc life sbi life and icici pro Uh, they are not even closer to three lakh crore kind of market cap, and even on that, if you can include the access wala uh, max health max financial, then also you will not reach three lakh twenty five thousand kind of thing. Uh, combine these four entity, they will have somewhere around twenty five twenty seven percent kind of market share. Again, you rightly mentioned the LIC, which is about sixty five sixty six percent kind of market share. Uh, yeah. I don't think uh, LIC dominance uh, can be removed in next ten years. It will take time. It gradually it is happening, uh, but it will take time. Yeah. They have like the second largest is HDFC, which is eight nine percent kind of market share versus LIC at sixty six percent. It's very difficult to replace that kind of dominance. But every year they are lose if uh, they lose one two percent kind of market share, which get distributed among the private players. you will see their dominance coming down but at least for next 10 years if you ask which will be the largest player in india i think lic will rule that way uh, among uh, in terms of largest market share right so anything else you i say thank you thanks sekan so i would request the audiences once thank again you. if you have any queries kindly send in the request so we'll take up your questions one by one and in the meantime i would request you people to check out our handles and if you find value kindly follow us and associate with our family yeah raja you can unmute yourself and ask question from ravi and ankit hello yeah so am i audible yes oh. yeah yeah uh, yeah so uh, yes so thank you ravi uh, and for all your insights so i am little bit uh, uh, a little bit uh, pro lic based on my uh, i mean previous experiences and also in my relatives and friends so what uh, yeah i understand uh, lic is not uh, i mean digitally forefront and the private market players are really catching the uh, i mean the market and also uh, <clears throat> uh, they have uh, i mean they have they are pushing onto this individual plans but in terms of integrity so what i understood and also uh, indic- i am not specific to any of the private players i am in very generic uh, very generic uh, so what i understood from my few of my insurance uh, friends working on insurance circle so it is all you know uh, how about the integrity because 
uh, if if any okay they are giving the premium much lesser compared to the lic for example for a 30 year old person to get an insurance policy in hdfc life would be close to 7500 or or 8000 but definitely less than 10000 however lic would be placed at least 30 to 40% more on a higher premium side but when we go to claims then comes the real phase of the uh, private place because they do business only for profit so what i understood from my uh, friends and peers like they said they will maximum try to uh, i mean uh, reject any of those claims they have their own terms and conditions and they interpret the term conditions terms and conditions on their favor so that they try to reject the policies or claim on any such uh, i mean any such higher term policies stating this is not verified or this is not uh, described properly during the policy under uh, writing and they try to do that so where the integrity is missed however lic is, is not digitally i mean uh, uh, it's not digitally good yes they might take some time but however the integrity point of view is properly met because it is again uh, socially i mean responsible i mean uh, so again one crore uh, refund i mean one crore uh claim amount for lic is nothing compared to the strength of lic but so yes people are going towards uh, the private place just because of reduced premium but what i see is lic is valuing it correctly and lic most of for most of the term policies lic made it very compulsory for the medical test and based on the uh, test from the medical uh, reports uh, the premium would be uh, uh, i mean arrived at however in private if you take some 30 year people there is no restriction that we have to take the i mean uh, take the uh, so what what we call like uh, <clears throat> the health test so it is more on the way like uh, the private only is not want i mean they want you to corner you okay you have not this, uh, i mean uh, furnish this details about you you have not furnished this and so integrity point of view i really say and uh, their nature of business is mostly they want to uh, i mean reject but they show as claim ratio we have did that did this but i'm not sure how it is arrived and uh, only i mean we are really i mean not aware yes lic also i mean they have their own set of policies but compared to private policy holders getting the claim if it is really genuine getting claim from lic is really good however the <clears throat> what i understood however the private players would definitely try to uh, pull us down and they have the very strong legal team who a uh, single a single individual cannot stand uh, uh, in front of them so they have a huge power so with this kind of thing uh yeah in terms of market we say i mean lic would hand out but in future what i think like lic uh, i mean uh, people would eventually get to know about this and uh, so what what lic is lacking is definitely uh, a digital infrastructure but that can be outsourced very easily like how uh, passport seva kendra has been outsourced to tcs L- lic have huge funds for that and also they are not vigorously uh, i mean uh, uh advertising like the other private players they can also do this they have the potential now it is going to be a listed company and and of course it has to be very transparent so going forward if uh, the management want to be very aggressive in terms of digital development and also uh, the uh, uh advertisements and uh, really if they are, they want to compete with these people i think if management could take this decision i could i, I still think for next uh, as uh, ravi said for next 10 to 15 years definitely lic should stand high or if the way of business is go going like uh, the same way how they are dealing then probably we may not have hope on uh, lsc on long long term so your views on this are we please uh, lots of things so you have answered in your question so i'll just uh, point out few things uh, one thing we were discussing na ke lsc say claim on uh, private insurance when we compare the claim ratio the private insurance look high i think the reason for that would be uh, on lic lots of claim used to happen on the rural side there can be some claim which are wrong which has been filed and some claims actually uh, might not be filed properly that's why lic we, we normally see at 95 96% kind of claim ratio i agree with you that if your documentation and your uh, other things are fine you will find very very little difficulty in terms of claim ratio in lic that should that's how the business should be done there other thing is lic in terms of valuation right now it's not coming any pricey it's like 1.1 embedded value versus you pick any one hdfc is about 3 uh, sbi and uh, icici is about 2 uh, kind of thing so if if we see that change which you are saying na since lic is becoming a listed entity and it will be easily to outsource any it infrastructure two three things you have to see that it digitally they are became very aggressive 
and other thing is their marketing becomes very aggressive and they have they have uh, say uh, onboarding the client digitally rather than uh, depending only on their army of agents those things happen and if and if you see uh, valuation move from 1.1 today to 1.3 i don't think anyone would hesitate to onboard lit at that point of time but right now those are our wish list i'm not sure i, I i'm not sure how much is uh in the plan of lic like like let's it get listed and then once we hear from management and what we hear from management it makes a constructive case that this thing is happening on that side one can onboard after 10 15% higher but right now uh it, this is uh, what we discuss right now is more of our wish list that if this comes through then then anyways this is the largest market share say, say if a uh, 8% market share hdfc trades at 1.1 lakh crore so uh, 6 lakh crore for a 66% market share is definitely cheap there is no two way about it but then that uh, it has to maintain that market share it has to maintain that profitability uh, right now uh, i think they it it might be work in progress but i'm not very convinced about that so that's my only argument so ravi uh, we uh, i mean going forward uh, see lic has been losing on the market share but if the base increasing increases and uh, if LIC, lic is able to maintain that huge base so won't that uh, add value to the i mean investors uh, on that front if 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 only base increases and lic maintain its above 60% even market share then it will be a great buy at 6 lakh crore but the problem is they are losing market share uh, recently every year every one two years they would say that the market share is coming down right right so ankit so even even if yeah yeah sir even if they maintain the market share and uh, and and uh, insurance business grows at 13 14% then also it will become very attractive but right now that is not the case right right so ankit i have one question like uh, see the private players are existing and uh, i mean psu player is entering the market so basically how i mean in the short term how you see you know, that will change the i mean uh, things in the insurance sector as a whole i mean for the existing players the re- re-rating will happen or i mean lic will go their way how i mean seeing the i mean not drawing parallel to insurance only what happens when such stalwarts enter market in other sectors as well uh, ai i think uh, it's very difficult to uh, put a point or uh, think what will happen in the short term so there are two things which is possible either the because lic is uh, is pricing itself very low compared to the private payer there could be a chance that the private payers can the valuation of their of the private payers can come down also then the other case could be uh, since private payers are uh, were generally priced at a much higher valuation post listing if the market overall sentiment remains uh, buoyant the private players can can rise the valuation of private players can why rise and simultaneously you can also see a rise in in case of uh, lic as well but the point is it doesn't matter it doesn't change anything and uh, you can't play for the short term uh, taking a long term call one thing we are very clear at smart sync services is that uh, we would not tend to uh, to look at lic as an investment purely point of really from a point of view of that that you can't take a long term bet when uh, as a uh, as an industry the private players are much more efficient and they are taking away market share so that is why it makes sense for us I, i'm not saying that uh, follow us and uh, whatever we are doing is right uh, anyone can have any view but uh, this is what we believe that since the private players are uh, ab- are much more efficient uh, they have much more uh, how do i put it the the team is better they have much better systems in place so that is why it makes sense to look at uh, them but given a choice i would uh, stay away from insurance as a sector because insurance in india even though it is very under penetrated till today but it's very 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 difficult and it also has a lot of uh black swan risk 
so be very careful when you are trying to invest in an insurance company that and that's what i would say thanks ankit so ravi like uh, tomorrow it will be a listing day so and those who have not been allotted the liquidity and got free right so i mean it was subscribed three times so t will enter the so will it change any scenario i mean we are seeing correction from past many days for short term will will it make any difference or how you see it no i don't think uh, that releasing of liquidity because it was stuck in lic application uh, will make much difference uh, any ipo uh, say uh, earlier other ipos so they were a smaller size say even if you take example of delivery it's 5000 crore ipo but then uh, amount stuck there would be 78000 or even more than that releasing of that fund will not people don't invest just because they have got liquidity they need to have a sense that they will make money in the market that's why uh, that's what the reason they entered into lic also say most of the retail investor will get that 45 rupees discount so i don't think they will be in dread tomorrow even if it uh, open set slide 1 2% kind of discount most of the people enter into lic because they saw that this kind of discount has been offered so uh, though liquidity came back as terms of uh, releasing of cash to the uh, investor from application but uh, say they will only come back and invest when they see there is opportunity and they see uh, market stabilize and go up uh, lots of people are like seeing uh, fall every day so i don't think just releasing of liquidity will drive them to come back in a, in an instant market need to stabilize first and then they will come. right right so we have sam with us sam kindly un- unmute yourself and ask your question hello sir am i audible yeah 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 sam you are audible go ahead as in a business owner uh, whenever we taking a stake in a company or buying a share we become a business owner of that company so if i want to open a business or if i want to uh, start a business or if i want to invest in a business probably i would invest in a 3 to 4 or 5 to uh, 5 or 6 business businesses so as an equity investor why uh, investor should own 15 to 20 stocks in their portfolio like if i, I want didn't to get your question properly that you are saying why we should invest in 15 20 stocks only uh, yes sir as an a business owner yes, we should sir. own 3 to 4 or 5 uh, maximum 3 to 4 or 5 businesses if you want Look, to become a business owner. If, if say if say you are a business person uh you are managing that thing on your own so you understand very intricately what risk you are taking okay but when you are investing where other managers are managing your money say other business owners it's more prudent that you have that uh, 15 20 uh, uh, companies in your list which co- which will broadly cover india's uh, different sectors say you will have few banks few financial services few auto few it few pharma chemical that that's how you want to participate in india's growth story uh, if you if you feel one or two particular sector is not expected to do well you might reduce that count from your portfolio but so what investing is all about is you are taking a view in terms of few sectors which is expected to do well and having a broad based portfolio will always diversify your risk because when you are not yourself on the driving seat you will come to know at a very late end what's wrong went into the business while when you are managing your own business you can you can see what's right what wrong which is happening and you can and since you are day in day out involved in that you can't manage more than 3 4 but uh, in terms of investment one thing is information asymmetry will make you uh, known to any kind of wrong doing or anything which happens in economy sector company you will know at the very back end it it's a better and proper to diversify uh, ankit you have any special take on this again i think ankit is not there no that's my only take that if you are an investor you need to uh, diversify further rather than sticking to three four stocks yeah same exactly it is individual specific but again it is uh, always advisable to uh, diversify your risks so as to prevent your capital so i once again reiterate if the audiences uh, have any questions they can send in the request or in the other case uh, we will ra- wrap it up for today and probably we will try to come up with more interesting spaces in future 
and i would request the audiences to kindly check our handles ravindras and ankit and mine and if you find value if you see such more interaction should happen in future so kindly follow us on our twitter and we will try to make it as interactive as possible and try to add value and once again i would say it would be more of educational space we are not here for denying any or we we recommending anything or denying or making any sell calls so it would be on your part we think we come here because people have so many doubts so many questions in their mind so today we basically discussed about the insurance sector as a whole and uh, where private pl- players have an edge and in what ways lic can do better if things play out as uh, planned so there are so many questions uh, coming to valuation valuation see there could be two reasons for valuation to be cheap it could be i mean it could be a value buy but it can also be the case like the valuation it deserve is what it is offering so both the cases can happen so it would be on your part to do your due diligence any closing re- remarks from ravindra and ankit uh- not specially uh, uh, the insurance sector as a whole is expected to do really well so watch out for this sector uh, there is huge opportunity in terms of under penetration and everything uh, ankit rightly pointed out to one risk which is a black swan kind of risk if any natural calamity happens something like uh, covid happened in india and the claim ratio jumped for at least 2 3 quarters but there again comes uh, this kind of black swan event for insurance sector comes as a opportunity as well all the people who were thinking that they don't need insurance after covid actually uh, registration for new insurance has actually gone up in india so uh, you need to see uh, the business manager who sees uh, opportunity in those kind of situation as well and if you back them uh, uh, and invest for a long term i think there is decent money to be made on the primary insurance player side yeah. yeah that's it from yeah thank you ai and ravi and uh, i basically joined as a listener i didn't in- intend to be a speaker and i really enjoyed listening to ravi and uh, that's it uh, hope uh, people will uh, gain some knowledge out of this session as uh, i really enjoyed uh, listening to ravi thank you hey sankit thanks sir as always thanks sankit and uh, audiences once again like uh, i mean even even in our previous pieces ankit ravi and we emphasize that we should have a financial plan in place and there are we should understand the importance of health insurance term insurance we have to make ourselves proof for any eventualities just like covid happened in 2020 so you n- never know the future is uncertain so the first thing is we have to come up with a financial plan by understanding ourselves and the term insurance is, i mean which is very relevant to today's topic as ravi was explaining term insurance is very important depending upon the family needs and you also need to safeguard you on health insurance front and after that you have to look for investment in different asset classes which you can understand well so with this i would thank each and every one of you the panelist ayan from share academy and other joinees who have have patiently listened to us from last 45 50 minutes so it was an interest in, uh, interactive session and we got to learn many things which we were du- dubious about so kindly follow us and we will come up with more such spaces in future thank you so much we'll meet again thank you ravi thank you ankit thanks thank you